Hey everyone, Caleb with the Antique Book Collective, and today I'm getting to you guys with something that's not going to be necessarily as positive as what you guys might be used to with my channel. You guys know that I like to normally try to lean towards the more positive things, always look towards the uh, positive of, hey, things might not look good, we can do good things with this. And this, guys, is one of those uh, catch-22s. There are some good things. There are some bad things. I do want to go over that. And with all that said, uh, the topic for today's video is fail fast. So I know a lot of people like link failure with just not being a good person, not being a good business person, all that sort of stuff. But failure, it's it has nothing to do with that. Failure is natural. Failure is common. Failure is something some people actually strive for because as Edison said he didn't uh, fail at making the light bulb he just found x many ways to not make it you know so it's the same thing with business guys you have to figure out what works and what doesn't work and while you're doing that you do have to figure out with the things that don't work you have to figure out how much money you should put into it before you describe or put a stamp of failure on that business endeavor on that effort on whatever this was so for me something that I would describe as a failure, but not necessarily a failure. I would describe it more as a failure to pause. So for me, guys, uh, this thing, I've mentioned it before, handmade journals. So guys, these little journals here, um, I need to get them all facing the same way. It's gonna murder someone's OCD. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to have them mixed up. Don't get mad at me, OCD people. Okay, okay, it's, it's okay now. All the things are going the right way. Don't hate me, don't hate me, promise me. Okay, so with that said though guys, uh, I did handmade journals. Uh, I still make a couple of these every now and then uh, if I so feel like it because it is really satisfying for me to make these. It's just really fun to make a denim hand-bound journal. So these denim uh, things guys, they actually are recycled jeans. Uh, you guys know that I love Goodwill Outlet, so I actually went to Goodwill Outlet. I bought, I wanna say like 20 pounds of jeans or something like that because you had to buy 20 pounds to get them at like a dollar a pound or something like that. So I bought a boatload of jeans. I bought all the like oversized jeans, you know? Uh, uh, so I could then cut them up and turn them into book covers. These book covers, guys, um, I promise I washed them. Sanitary wash, hot water, all sorts of chemicals several times because you guys know how Goodwill Outlet sometimes has quite the stink uh, into all the clothing that you get. But I bought these, cleaned them up. I mean, they are quite clean now. They're beautiful also. But I was buying them because I knew for a fact that I'd be cutting them up and turning them into books. I spent a couple of weeks probably a couple of months potentially trying to figure out all the best ways to bind books. Uh, the reason why I got into book binding in the very first place was because I have in my business, I have books that I come across that have their pages loose. And because they have their pages loose, I have to think of, okay, am I going to reattach these pages? If I am, how am I going to do that? And in addition to that, I also think, should I reattach these pages pages, or should I leave them be? Uh, sometimes you should leave things be in your business because like uh, if you do antique books, you should leave them be sometimes because sometimes your efforts to repair things actually damages the value, actually damages the collectability, that sort of thing. Uh, for me, I did still learn how to do book binding just so I could sort of like really narrow things down and know how to fix it if I did choose to fix it. With that said though, uh, what fed into the book binding Sorry, what uh, came up of, of the book binding, you know, what came from that was I figured out, hey, I could make handmade journals. I think that'd be a pretty good market. And in fact, it was uh, not too bad of a market. Um, I made these handmade journals. Uh, I, they cost me, I think the average cost uh, labor included was because I was uh, figuring to pay myself. 60 bucks an hour maybe 40 or 60 bucks an hour i don't remember exactly but uh when i was doing it i figured everything out and i was like okay uh, i have about eight dollars worth of expense into these books and then if i ship them off to amazon it'll be x much more expense i chose to uh merchant fulfilled for some of them i chose to ship some of them off i believe i don't recall exactly uh but i j basically just decided all the different things that i wanted to do with this thing and end of the day i actually sold more of these books on uh journals on ebay than i did on amazon uh which was interesting but it was something that i got into it was something that i really enjoyed and with that said uh, i'm just going to hold up one of these a little closer for you guys it's just something that i really thought was a really beautiful thing i thought there'd be a pretty good demand for it and there wasn't necessarily bad demand i mean for a brand new product that i was just testing out i made i don't know 40 of these uh and by the time that i finished my first one i had already like drawn out 
not necessarily drawn out. I don't really draw these things out. I have a good imagination, but like mentally, I draw out how I would uh, build these things as quickly as I could. I figured out like a good streamlined way of doing it. And it went from me having to just make one at a time and it would take hours and hours and hours to make one at a time to I would make batches of a couple dozen of them because it was just so much faster to do batches. Like I would have it so all, all at one point I would uh, make the text blocks and I would make all the text blocks together. I'd sew them all together. Like I literally was hand sewing the pages together like you are uh, supposed to you will see this in the old books guys there are actually threads holding the books pages together um i did that method to hold these pages together plus glues all that sort of stuff and i basically just went through all these things and i did it like that i did the inbound uh bookmark ribbons because I love the design of the inbound ribbons. I just think they are beautiful. I love the style of them and I did a nice like wax coated string on it with a cute little pendant on it. I thought it was something that people would really appreciate and uh, the people that bought them did like them. And end of the day though guys why did I fail at this business? It's because it just took too much time. The payout was not good enough for the time that I put in. I figured my time was better spent than the wages that I was paying myself for making these. Even at the very high efficiency that I was making these at, the profit margin just was not quite there for me to do it because end of the day, my time is worth a lot more than just the X much that I was going to pay myself per hour for making these journals. Uh, still, I do make these sort of as a hobby, not necessarily to sell. In fact, I don't. I haven't sold one for quite a while. I just hand them out to friends sometimes because people love the handmade things and it these feel really good. They have good quality. They're really fun to use too. I, I use them myself. Um, but end of the day though, I failed at this business for now because I just did not see the silver lining, you know, of there's good, good money to be had in this. For me, I did it long enough that I was just like, okay, I know I can make X much. That is not just, that's not interesting enough for me to continue doing. I know I can make more money, like at the time, I knew I could make more money doing my antique book business and focusing more on that and stop focusing on these books. Uh, the reason why I even thought about doing these books, in addition to just like sort of wanting to test that out, was I was like, okay, so when I'm not buying books during the weekdays, uh, most weekdays at least, I list the books and then I have nothing to do all week, basically, you know, I all I have to do is like wait for sales to come in, pack the sales, you know, like um, obviously I did have stuff to do a lot of the other days because I do have other businesses that I do and obviously I do have listing that goes into the week a lot of the times, but sometimes I would end up with nothing to do because I had a lull in one business, a lull in the other, so I was just like, okay, what do I do with today? So uh, obviously I decided to start up another business because that's what that's what you do when you're an entrepreneur like me. You're like, okay, I got 30 seconds to spare. Let's start a business. So uh, that's what I did. I, I, I didn't stick with it though, guys, because at the end of the day, it was just too much of a time sink for me. And yes, I could just focus on this business and do like an hour a week and still make quite a few books because again, I really got the batches down. In fact, I have a few batches sitting there, a couple more batches of things sitting over there just because I do like have the stuff still on hand to con continue doing the business again because long term, I do want to get back into this. Uh, I don't plan on making them myself. I do plan on hiring out uh, employees and training employees to do this because I do see a good market for this. I mean, I know for a fact people like these because I have sold them to people, I've given them to people and they've loved these. So um, obviously there is a market to be had. There is good money to be had. Uh, I, I think I charge 20 bucks a piece on these. I think I might've asked 25 sometimes uh, for them and they were selling regardless. So, I mean, it's definitely something that people are interested in. This was as of a couple years ago. So with inflation, I could probably charge 30 bucks. I probably don't think I'd actually do that. But end of the day, though, guys, it's just something that I did as a business decision of cutting this for the time being, because at the end of the day, the time that it took to do this business, my own manufacturing, all that sort of stuff is just not expedient for me to continue. Because again, the antique book side of my business, it just does so much better than so many of the other businesses that I've tried out, which I just to this day, I just think it's so crazy to think that my first business, my first business was book selling. It's crazy to think that to this day, book selling is still one of my most profitable endeavors, my most rewarding for the time I put in, all that sort of stuff. So it's fun for that fact. And in addition to that, I just think it's also amazing to think that the joy that I derive from selling books is so high compared to so many of the other things that I do. Because again, it was the first thing I tested out. What are the, what are the chances that the first thing I do works well? And 
Uh, if you guys know me, you do know that I do get quote unquote lucky a lot, and the first thing that I do normally is pretty fun. Uh, like for me, the new gold mine that I'm working on starting, it was actually the first spot that I tested that is where the gold mine is going to be. Um, I tested out miles and miles of other land everywhere else, and nothing quite panned out to be just as amazing as the first pan of testing. So uh, that is sort of how my luck normally works, I guess, but um, not necessarily all the time. But uh, with that said, though, guys, um, I do really want to express to you guys that failing fast is a necessary business trait. It's something that you need to learn as a business person if you really want to succeed. Uh, something else that I want to outline is you guys probably know uh, Jeff Bezos, the guy in charge of Amazon, you know. You probably know that he in his business also works with the whole fail fast mentality. He has done quite a few different things in his business where he throws enough money behind the new venture, whatever the venture is. He throws enough money behind it to make sure that it has every chance to succeed, but then if it does not succeed, he accepts it, he lets it fail, he will downsize that department, move the people around, or just can them, you know, uh, depending on what happens, all that sort of stuff, but he has the wherewithal, the wisdom to be like, okay, this particular business thing, it, it does not work out as well as I thought, uh, I'm sort of bummed about that, but I know for a fact that I cannot dwell on this because if I dwell on this failure it's just going to beget more failure and you cannot get into the cycle of always throwing more and more money behind a failed plan you guys have to learn how to fail fast accept failure on a plan and then move on moving on is the biggest part in your business it's not just failing fast it's also the moving on on part of things so for me guys as I mentioned before I do still do this every now and then but it is like what five minutes a year something like that you know just enough to like sort of have some fun but not really focus on it it's only a hobby for me in fact i would just throw these away honestly if it really was getting to be a distraction for me and my business i have enough distractions as it is which are all my other businesses but uh with that said though guys you do have to learn how to not only fail fast but move on once you fail you have to learn how to let's say for me i pivoted from the books back the handmade journal sorry back into the books because end of the day that's where the money was for me i knew my you know i've mentioned in other videos the 80 20 principle 20 percent of your profit sorry 20 percent of what you sell makes up 80 percent of your profit that's sort of how it works and 80 percent of it only makes up 20 percent um so you want to focus on the 20 so for me the antique books are my 20 percent that really make me my money uh, excuse me scratch my nose um for me, that's what happens. Uh, for me, in addition to that, you guys know I've mentioned before that I used to sell books on Amazon. I used to do the Amazon FBA. And guys, I stopped doing that because the 80-20 principle, basically, all my money, all the best rewards for my time were in the antique books, were in eBay. Uh, Amazon fees, they were just so high. Yes, it was the ease of listing books in, on Amazon and just throwing them out there, you know, and I'd sh send in like a thousand books all at once and they would list them all and I'd have consistent sales, you know, and it's really nice to have co the consistent sales. Uh, I would say cons my sales were a lot more consistent on Amazon than they are on eBay because end of the day, I was selling thousands of books on Amazon, whereas for eBay, I only sell a couple hundred. But Guys, even when my ratio was probably, not going to lie, it was probably like one eBay book for every 20 books I threw on Amazon, maybe even more. Honestly, I might even say like one eBay book for 50 Amazon books. Like it was an insane ratio. Even with those ratios though, I still made more money on my eBay store with my antique books than I did on Amazon. I was not losing money on Amazon. I was making pretty good money on Amazon, but just because the profit margins on eBay, I just was like... I gotta learn how to fail. My failure here is Amazon. Amazon FBA is a failure for me. The profit margins just are not there. Yes, I'm making money, but it's just not enough money. Just like with this, I paid off what I invested in it and the different tools that I purchased to make these journals, you know? I paid it off with the couple sales that I got, but at the end of the day, I was like, the money is just not here. It's not good enough for me. I need to focus back on what I know makes money. I need to get back to my roots, you know, and uh, that is something that, again, guys, you just really need to learn in your business is how to focus on what really works well for you. And in addition to that, you also have to learn how to expand your business. Like for me, when I started my Amazon bi uh, FBA business, I started the FBA business with, I was barely even considering antique books. Like, I've always liked antique books, so I knew I'd see some and I'd probably pick some up. I was thinking I'd pick them up for myself. But the antique books were sort of an extension of that business in the very beginning. Like, it was my very first test. Like, I know I shouldn't be running a test when I first start my business, but I did. I was like, okay, let's see how these do. Let's see how eBay does and compare it to Amazon. 
it was a test and it was a test that succeeded. I've had quite a few businesses that I've run as different tests that have succeeded very well. And uh, actually, with that said though, guys, so you guys know how I've been talking about wanting to start a uh, gold mine. So that is a new business that I'm testing out. Um, I'm 99.99999% sure. Actually, no, let's, let's, let's say I'm 100% sure that's going to work out. Uh, but something that I've been playing around with, an idea that I've been playing around with is, hey, so what if I did this business with the gold mine long term i need to be selling gold and a lot of people they just sell the raw gold to a coin store or something like that and i was like okay what if i refine it myself because there are ways to refine it yourself you know do all that sort of stuff get all all the stuff perfectly legal to do it as perfectly as you can all legal wise and i was like but then it'd be fun to sell it myself then i was like "Ooh, i could sell it on ebay and then if i was going to do ebay though i need to get good reviews before i start selling freshly mined gold and what should i do to do that and i was like "Ooh, i could sell these uh certain items on ebay uh for me guys uh, i wish i had some on hand right now but uh guys there are things called gold backs i've shown actually the video hasn't come out yet there's a video coming out soon that has a gold back on it but um there are these little they look like just gold foil and it actually is gold and these things like are made of gold it's called a gold back i recommend you guys check them out just because they're really cool but i was looking them up and i was like look and look and look and i was like i see an arbitrage opportunity here because there's one store that i just recently started purchasing gold backs from uh i buy gold and silver guys um not only is it because i'm an old-fashioned person but also just because i focus on investing stuff for me personally, uh, I see gold and silver as a good opportunity, uh, not investment advice, do whatever you guys want. I'm not your financial advisor, but for me personally, I am into gold. I am getting more into gold, all that sort of stuff. But in that whole endeavor, guys, I actually found a spot where I could buy gold backs for like half the price of what people are selling them for on eBay. And I was just looking at that and I was like, maybe this is how I could start an eBay store for gold. Uh, that way I could get some good reviews for gold because people, when they're buying gold and silver, they do want to see good reviews. A lot of people at least because end of the day, there's a lot of people selling fake gold and silver out there. So if you can get good reviews of you selling real stuff, people will be more apt to buy from you. And for me, if I want to start my own mint, you know, long term, I will need those good reviews so people know that I am legit. So that is something that I've been looking at and thinking, okay, I could even charge like, let's say it's a dollar. Everyone else is asking $2. I could charge $1.50 and still give everyone a good deal and still undercut all the competition. And I'm just sitting here like, oh, maybe I could. Maybe I should. That sort of stuff. So that is something that I've personally been thinking about testing out. Uh, it's something that I probably will test out in the future. We'll, we'll see. But uh, end of the day, though, guys, I'm always testing things out. You guys have heard in all my other videos things that I have tested out, things that have succeeded and haven't succeeded. Uh, obviously, you guys have also seen me say, Yep, that was not a good choice. Uh, this was a good choice then, not a good choice now, that sort of stuff. Something that you guys, I hope, will see in my videos is that I do accept the fact that I can fail in my business. I fail often, I fail fast, and then I move on. That is something that I really try to focus on. It's something I really try to nail through people's heads too because a lot of people, they will dwell on something because if they fail in this business, they might think they are a failure in business in general, but you're not. Failure in business is just the natural way that things happen. Yeah. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. C'est la vie, move on, you know? End of the day, you can always return to it. So as you guys have heard in my other videos, I started selling cookbooks again, just testing it out. If it works out well, I'm gonna continue doing it. If it doesn't work out well, I'll stop doing it again. I test it out every so often because I do know of people that succeed in businesses of just selling cookbooks. Same with mass market paperback. Sometimes they do a whole lot better than other times. Right now they're doing pretty well for me. So that's just something, again, guys, that I like testing out, that I like doing, that sort of thing. And uh, I quick aside with the mass market paperbacks uh so for me guys those they're not very profitable like for like per sale per sale i sell about 10 uh books for nine dollars which is about 90 cents a book i pay about 10 cents a book so yeah it's still profitable but it's just not the margins that i like when uh, if you guys have been following for a long time you know i like multiples on my money that just is not enough of a multiple for me and for these making these books guys uh, i think i ran the numbers the actual materials into these i think it was like two dollars 53 cents and if i if i'm selling for 20 bucks that's a pretty good multiple but end of the day uh, just under 10 times multiple discluding labor discluding fees it's like that's just not good enough for me so that's just some of the stuff that i like to keep in mind it's something that i do i run the numbers it's my thing sort of so with all that said and done though guys i hope this is inspirational for you i hope that you guys uh now understand that failure in business does not mean you're a failure in life and it does not mean that you're done 
you do not have to quit if you failed once. So with that said though guys, hope this helped. Uh, if it did, please be sure to subscribe, drop a like, drop a comment also, and please be sure to check out one of my other videos when you guys are done with that, and I'll see you guys in the next one.